Elf. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Open your Bibles, if you will, please, to the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4. I have uh, been preaching for four Sundays on television on um, guarding your mind. I have those tapes over there. I really had one more message. I'm going to call it Closing the Door in the Face of the Devil. Can I have an amen? amen? Because if you know how the devil can come into you or against you, you can close the door in his face. Philippians 4, it says, in verse 6, be careful for nothing, but one translation says, do not fret or be have any anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and what? and minds through Christ Jesus. Then he says, whatever things are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and good report, and if any of you be in virtue, be in praise, think, 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 think. Everybody say, think. Think, think on these things. Now, in the book of, um, I'll quote it to you, you don't need to turn. In the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are lost. Now listen carefully. In whom the God of this world hath blinded their minds, lest the light come in. The devil's entrance into your life, personality, emotions, must be through your mind. His his doorway, his playground, and his battleground is in your mind. If you can shut the thoughts out, you can shut the door in the devil's face. No suicide happens until there's a thought. No fornication takes place till there's a thought. No adultery takes place until there's a thought. No theft takes place until there's a thought. The devil's business is to put the wrong kind of thoughts into your mind or blind you from the right kind of thoughts. And preachers, listen, the devil has a heyday with your mind someday, sometime. Divorce begins with a thought. Well, she's not as pretty as she used to be. She looks at him and says, well, the old gray mare ain't what he used to be. <laughs> you know, it starts with a thought. Oh, my, look at that pretty girl. Oh, my, look at that handsome man. You don't let the devil put the wrong kind of thoughts into your mind. Some people say, well, I have, I, I, I had a terrible thought and I'm so depressed. I, I just hate it. Listen, learn to separate yourself from bad thoughts. If you don't like the thought, it's not yours. It came from an outside force. A man called me one day. He was scared to death. He was a preacher. He said, I was going down the highway. And he said, something said to my mind, you're a homosexual, you're a homosexual, you're a homosexual, you're a homosexual. He said, brother, those I'm scared to death. I laughed. I said, that's nothing but a little old hairy demon. I said, he jumped in your car and whispered in your ear. I said, I said, you love your wife? He said, I sure do. I said, are you attracted to her? Sure I am. I said, you're not a homosexual. I said, kick that demon out. 
Then the devil will come along and say, you're afraid, you're afraid. devil said, you got cancer, you got cancer. devil said, you'll fail, you'll fail. devil said, that preacher down the street doesn't like me. Uh, he don't want to have any fellowship with me. That's the devil. Don't let the devil put thoughts in your mind like that. Amen. Amen. You say, devil, if you say any more about that preacher down the street, I'm going to take him the biggest offering in the world and take it down there and give it to him. <laughs> if, if the devil can, can keep you in the realm of the mental, he will win every battle. But we don't live in the mental, we live in the spirit. But his business is to blind the mind. To put wrong thoughts in us and to blind us from the good thoughts. Now, for instance, for 19 years, he blinded me to the great truths that I'm preaching today. I went to college, got my bachelor's degree. I went to seminary and I got my master's degree. And, uh, in college and seminary, they taught me that miracles were not for today. There was no baptism in the Holy Spirit for today. They taught me that healing had passed away and any sign or miracle was from the devil. They taught me that speaking in tongues was of the devil. And so I came out of college and seminary with my mind blinded by the devil. Blocked. And it held me in captivity for 19 years. I no more believed in what in getting around fanatics like you than a man in the moon. I wouldn't come near you. I, I, just, I just, just went off of me like water off of a duck's back. I, I didn't believe in healing. I didn't believe in miracles. I didn't believe in signs. I didn't believe in wonders. I, I, didn't, believe in, I, I didn't believe in speaking in tongues. I didn't believe in all those things. You know, I, I, I believed, you know, the gospel is all, all that I knew. But, but you see, the devil used the seminaries, and he knows how to get it. If he can get the leaders and get in the seminaries and get the leaders' minds blinded, they'll never, never teach anything right in the church. You can't preach what you don't know any more than you can come back from where you ain't been. Brother Ricardo, I love you, and Giuseppe, and all these others from Spain and Italy. But you know, I preached a sermon one time in the Central Baptist Church of Baytown. I saw in 1 Corinthians that there were supernatural, there were gifts there. The gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of discerning of spirits the gift of miracles, the gifts of healings, and the gift of special faith, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. And I, and, and I thought, well, I've never preached on this. I must preach this to the church. So I got up, and I said, now, you know, I want to explain these gifts. I said, uh, the gift of the word of, uh, of wisdom is, uh, and knowledge is what we uh, teach in our great Baptist universities. When you get knowledge and wisdom from them, that is the gift. Of <laughs> and I said, the gift of discerning of spirits is our, our great psychiatric areas. And then I said the gifts of healing is represented by our great Baptist hospitals. And I said then the, the gift of tongues, uh, uh, you know, is, uh, is uh, some people have the linguistic ability to learn different languages. 
And I, as I was going along, I remember the utter confusion <laughs> that came into my mind. And I closed my Bible and I said, people, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I didn't. And you know, I would fellowship with an Assembly of God preacher by the name of Jenkins Woods over close to Baytown, Cedar Bow. You know, the devil, the devil's plan is to keep us away from each other. Methodist and Baptist and Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Charismatic, Catholic. I'm convinced if we could all get together, we'd, we could learn. But I, I would go down and I would have, you know, uh, maybe uh, Monday morning breakfast with this Assembly of God preacher. I knew he was half crazy, but <laughs> because, you know, he spoke in tongues. I, I didn't want to get involved in that, but he was a good man. <laughs> but, um, you know, we had a good time. He'd tell me what happened in his service, and I'd tell him what happened in mine. I was always happy because I had a whole lot more people than he did. <laughs> you know, I had a big church. We were always bragging about numbers. When I got the baptism, I got out of the book of Numbers and got in the book of Acts. As Baptists, we counted everything that didn't move. <laughs> we added, ten, this is the truth, we added 10% lest we overlooked anybody. So we'd have big numbers. <laughs> and, and, and always, you go to any Baptist convention, they say, how many are running in Sunday school? How many are running in church? How many are running? When they came up to me and said, since you got the baptism, how many are you running? I said, I don't know how many are coming, but they're all running. But anyway, one day, listen, one day, this man told me, Brother Osteen, we were sitting at breakfast, he said, something wonderful happened in our church. I said, what was it? He said, a little girl, about 12 years old, got up and began to give a supernatural message in other tongues. Now, I was down in the dark hole of Baptist tradition, bound by a thousand chains. I couldn't get out. You can't break those chains just by yourself. Somewhere I knew there was light. Somewhere I knew there was victory. Somewhere I knew there was reality. But I couldn't get out. And he said this little girl began to speak in a, a heavenly language, a, a other tongues, and gave a message to our church. Now, sitting there eating my breakfast, I just kept on eating. And I thought to myself while he was telling this, now I'm telling you the truth, poor child, she'll be in a mental institution soon. She's lost her mind. You know, that's really, that's really what I thought. And he said, Brother O.C., he's so kind. People full of the Holy Ghost are so kind. He said, Brother Osteen, then we had a Brother McCorkle, home owns furlough from, from Africa, who still lives in this area, uh, uh, now, right at this moment. And, uh, and he was on furlough, and he leaped to his feet and came forward and said, this child is speaking in the language of the tribe I minister to in Africa, and here's what she's saying. I like to choke to death on what I see. <laughs> it was the first time in my Baptist life that I'd ever come face to face with the real supernatural gifts of the Spirit. And when I heard that, every chain broke, and I got loose. I didn't get the baptism there, but I set my face. Thank God 
The darkness of the devil that blinded me was broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. I had been blinded to healing and miracles and signs and wonders and speaking in tongues. And, and, and when, when I heard that, the reality came. There must be some truth about what the Bible talks about. Oh, I read the book of Acts and the Gospels. And as I read the book of Acts, I want to cut off my right arm to have what they had. I cried out for it in all those Baptist days. But every voice of every professor came roaring down through the corridors of time. It's all gone. Not for today. But I'll tell you, there's a rising a generation that's not going to be denied. But, but, but what I'm saying, he blinded my mind. One thought can hold you in captivity. Naaman said, as he came over there, he was full of leprosy. He was headed to Elisha's house. He was going to get healed. And uh, Elisha sent word out and said, go tell him to dip seven times in the river Jordan. And Naaman turned around in a rage and went away. And here's what the Bible says. He said, I thought. Everybody say, I thought. I thought. Now here he is filled with leprosy, dying of leprosy, and one thought is keeping him from a miracle. One thought can hold you in the realm and make you a defeated person if you let the devil put that thought in your heart. I thought, I thought he'd come out, I thought he'd lay his hand over here, I thought he'd call on the name of his God, I thought he had a little formula, he thought he was going to do all of this, and he didn't do it his way. So he went away in a rage. And his servant said, if he'd asked you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? Why not do an easy thing? When he gave up the thought and came back, he got his miracle. God said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Isaiah 55. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy and unto our God for he will abundantly pardon. See, in order to come to, to the Lord to be saved, uh, you have to do two things. Forsake your ways and your thoughts. You know, most people you go around and say, well, I, I, if I'm, just, I'm good enough to be saved, I'm better than the church members. If I live by the golden rule, I, I'll go to heaven. If I keep the commandments, I'll go to heaven. If my good outweighs my bad, I'll go to heaven. Uh, you know, uh, if, I, uh, if I just uh, do the best I can, I'll go to heaven. You got to forsake your thoughts. Amen. There's only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus. Amen. You have to forsake your ways and your thoughts thoughts and return unto the Lord. And then he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. Look at me, would you? Here are the thoughts of God right here. It's not what some professor says. It's not what some college says. It's not what some seminary says. It's not what some man says. It's not what some denomination says. This is the word of the living God. And, and you know, I want to encourage you, watch your mind, guard your mind. Negative thoughts will hold you in bondage. Impossible is not in my vocabulary. God is a, with God all things are possible. You can think, now, now, now let's talk about preachers. Preachers say, well, you know, I am say to me, I'm in a hard town. I'm in a preacher's graveyard. Nobody could ever have a great church in this town. Everybody who's ever had tried to have a church here has failed. You know what I'm talking about? 
you got to say, hello, devil. Hello, El Stinko. Come up here, devil. The Bible says in John, you're a liar. And the father of all lies. We're going to build a great church in this town. Amen. The devil tells you because you're not fully educated and don't have a lot of degrees. Oh, you'll never amount to anything. Listen, no demon I ever faced ever asked me what degree I had. He just wants to know what name I'm coming in. That's right. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Well, you know, some... Some mornings I get up when it's raining or I'm still in bed when it's raining and it's Sunday morning and I have a thought, I believe I'll stay in bed. <laughs> the devil say, it's raining and nice and you don't really have to get up and preach. I said, no, I don't have to, but I want to. Did you ever, did you ever think about staying in bed? The devil tried to divert your attention while somebody's preaching on Sunday morning. You're thinking about, what am I going to eat when I get home? <laughs> All kinds of thoughts to, di to distract you. But the main thing, there are thoughts that can hold you captive for a lifetime. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to tell the story of my sister. Our people know this better than I do. My sister Mary was the first convert I ever won to Jesus. She was a nightclub goer. And uh, she saw me staying home reading my Bible after I got saved. And she said, John, why do you do this? I said, Mary, Jesus saved me. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian now. I'm not going out to the night comes anymore. I looked up. I thought she was going to fuss at me and she, tears were running down her face. She's getting ready to go out to a nightclub. And she said, John, do you, you reckon Jesus would save someone like me? I said, yes, Mary. First convert I had, she knelt by the dining room table, passed out of darkness into life, out of the devil's power into God's kingdom wonderful Christian woman, taught in the Baptist church, such a wonderful Bible teacher. But anyway, uh, somehow the devil got a hold of her and, and she went down, down, down in health. And uh, she got to the place where she, she had, they took her in and out of institutions. She had violent convulsions. And uh, she saw demon powers in her room. And they, they finally had to bring her home to die in that condition. She had 24-hour nurse's care. She couldn't walk. She couldn't get up and feed her, uh, go to the bathroom. She couldn't feed herself. I didn't know all of this. I'd been away from her for some years, and I didn't know how bad she was. And uh, uh, she just lay there in a darkened room. Going down the freeway, the Lord spoke to my heart with my mother-in-law and my wife and children in the car. And he said to me, right, right in the middle of the highway, driving in the highway, he said, your sister Mary is desperately ill, but the time of her deliverance has come. We were expecting Tamara then. She's about 30-something years old. Now, so that's how long this has been. And uh, so I, I waited till Tamma was born and then I left. Uh, she was born, I think, the next day, and then 33 years. And so then I got in the car and I drove to Dallas and I prayed in tongues all the way. I imagine demons were sitting on the front and the back and the top and they're saying, what's she talking about? They said, we don't know. It's a language we can't discern. Thank God we got a language the devil can't understand. And when I got to Dallas, I got Brother H.C. Noah, who's an Assembly of God preacher, to go out there with me. When we got out of the car at Mary's house, it just seemed like a bucket of electricity was poured down on me. I felt like I was 25 feet tall. I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost come on me. I went to the door. And the Presbyterian nurse came to the door. I said, I said, I'm Mary's brother. She let us in. We went in that darkened room. And I'm telling you, anger came over me. I'm telling you, sometime the Holy Ghost will bring anger. 
I saw her with her matted hair and glassy eyes and, and just reaching out, didn't even know me, and just said, ah, 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 like that, just ah. Oh, that darkened room. I marched over there to those curtains and I pulled them open and I said, God is light, let light in here. I went to the other one, God is light, let light in here. Now, I did not know, but the Holy Ghost did, I did not know that my sister was helped by one thought. She thought she was suffering for Jesus. Her denomination had taught her that God sent this and that she must be patient, that this God sent this to teach her something. See? So now, you see, I didn't know this, so I heard myself say, shout out, don't tell me my God did this to my sister. Now, normally I wouldn't say that. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. My sister told me later, she said, I heard somebody shout out, don't tell me God this did this to my sister. She said, and I thought way down on the inside of me, well, maybe I'm not suffering for God. Maybe this isn't from God. You see, that thought was destroyed. And I said, Mary, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demon to leave you, every demon to leave this house, in Jesus' name. I said, in Jesus' name, rise and walk. I didn't know she couldn't walk. She leaped out of bed, hit the wall, and fell down like a dish rag. We picked her up, Brother Noah and I, I didn't know she couldn't walk. We put our hands on her, and I forgot she was a Baptist. And I said, Mary, receive the Holy Ghost. And I began to pray in other tongues. And she told me later, she said, I heard somebody speaking a language I couldn't understand. It went into my mind. It went down inside of me and broke something loose on the inside of me. And she began to talk in other tongues. And when we turned her loose, the one that couldn't walk ran. She ran through that house. That day she was delivered. That day she walked. That day she ran. That day she fed herself. That day she was made whole. And she's never had another Delantin tablet. Never had another bit of medicine for that. Every demon was driven out. And, and uh, I said to her uh, later, I said, Mary, why did you jump out of bed so quick when I said, in the name of Jesus, ju uh, rise and walk? Mary, rise and walk. She said, uh, well, I heard God say, rise and walk. I said, no, Mary, you didn't hear God say, rise and walk. I was right there at the bed, head, head of the bed, and I said, rise and walk. She said, no, I heard God say, rise and walk. I said, no, you heard John say, rise and walk. She said, no, John, I heard God say, rise and walk. I said, no, Mary, I was there. <laughs> she got her fist like this. She said, you listen to me, little brother. She said, I know what I heard. I heard a royal voice out of the heavens cry out, Mary, rise and walk. And what I learned, if you walk in the Holy Ghost, God's voice is blended with our voice. But what I wanted to say is, 33 years, she would have still been in that condition, helped by one thought. Millions of people are helped by thoughts like that. I'm suffering for Jesus. God's teaching me a lesson. There are no miracles today. God does not perform miracles anymore. Thoughts. God, the devil has blinded the minds. We've got to break the power of the devil over the minds of people. Amen. Now, one day, I, went, I, 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 I had a lot of weakness in my body before I had open heart surgery and for several years. And uh, I just want to lie down in the mall. I, I mean, just wherever. I just didn't have any strength. 
and Joe Papal, who has a wonderful healing ministry, was praying for people that are full gospel businessmen out in the lobby of a hotel. So I said, I think I'll get Joe to pray for me. So I went up there, and Joe prayed for me. Now, I'd never felt the tangible presence of the anointing of healing power. It's like warm oil that'll flow over your body. And I'm telling you, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. It started with my feet. Filled my toes, filled my ankles, came on up to the middle of my leg. It was like warm oil just coming right up over the top of me. And you know, in my ignorance. This is the end of side one. So supernatural, I can feel it. It's coming right up. I said, this is coming from the wrong direction. It ought to be, if it's from God, it ought to be coming down. <laughs> the very moment I thought that, it stopped right there. Right there, it stopped right there. I mean, it stopped. One thought, negative thought, stopped the flow of God's healing power. It didn't rise one fraction of an inch anymore. But just that little dose I got, I had such energy all day. I wonder what would happen if I'd let it just come right on up. I'd never had to have that operation. See? But what I'm saying, your thinking may be the thing that's stopping the move of the Holy Ghost. Guard your mind. Renew it in the Word of God. If the devil says you're going to die, say, with long life he satisfies me. If the devil tells you you're weak, say, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. If the devil says you can't do it, say, I can do all things through Christ. See, renew your mind to where you answer and let the, those thoughts be driven out. If you'll read all the translations about Judas, who, who sold and the Lord Jesus betrayed him, in one translation, I think the whole process is given in all these translations. It says, and, and Satan having suggested to Judas. His first approach is just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. Soft, tender suggestion. Why don't you resign? Or he'll say to your people, why don't you quit tithing. Why don't you quit sending missionary money? Just a suggestion. No big deal. Just suggest. <laughs> Just a suggestion. And then the other translation puts it a little stronger. It says, and Satan had put the thought into Judas. I read in the Greek Testament the other day It says, the actual translation says, and Satan hurled with such force the thought into Judas, the thought stayed. Read Weiss, New Testament, from the Greek. He'll suggest until you get open, and then he'll hurl that thought into you until it'll stick. And then the other Translation said, and then Judas entered in. Uh, uh, Satan entered in to Judas. Wherever he can get you to accept his thoughts, he can come in. I don't want any of his thoughts. Guard your mind. Guard your mind. Fill your mind with the thoughts of God. Pray in tongues. Quote the word of God. Dodie and I walk on the treadmill every day. I walk two miles, 30 minutes, and I quote scriptures. I just, just quote those scriptures. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the time just goes. And you, you know, you can, you can quote scriptures going up and down the highway. You can, you can just renew your mind. All thoughts that disturb you are not yours. 
I'm going to say that again. All thoughts that disturb you are not yours. You're the one that's disturbed. <laughs> so rise up and say, oh no, 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 no. I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to take that. I, I refuse that in the name of Jesus. Quote the scripture. You see, Jesus overcame the devil with the word. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. And you can slam the door in the devil's face by guarding your mind and keeping his thoughts out of your brain. Amen. Because if he can put them in there, he can get in and you can become obsessed. I'm not talking about possessed, but obsessed until he nearly drives you crazy. He, he is tormenting this very night millions of Christians with this thought, you have committed the unpardonable sin. We have psychologists here and, and people who do counseling and they deal with people like that all the time. And, 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 and Satan has hurled that into their mind with such force, it stays. They can get out. It's not easy, but they can get out. They have to drive the thought out of their mind with the Word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus. So guard your minds. God says my thoughts are not your thoughts. Think like God thinks. I might say this, think like God thinks about you. God thinks I'm wonderful. He calls me a new creature. He calls me born again. He calls me the righteousness of God. He calls me more than a cocker. He calls me that I can do all things through the name of Jesus. He always makes me to triumph. You know, we need to think big thoughts. We need to think world thoughts. When God looked, he saw a world. When he loved, he loved a world. When Jesus came, he came for a world. When he died, he died for a world. When he rose up, he arose for the world. When he sent his disciples out, he sent them to the world. Think world thoughts. And then uh, don't accept poverty thoughts. Think uh, not skinny goats, but fatted calf. Think abundance. Don't let the devil put failure thoughts into you. Guard your mind. And you know, before you know it, when you're getting kind of a little depressed, you don't really realize that you're following a suggestion the devil's given you. And you wake up and say, hey, hold it, devil, hold it. That's not true. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. The Bible says that if we'll just commit everything to God, the peace of God, the uh, Amplified says, will mount guard, garrison your heart, your hearts and your minds. So if you'll trust the Lord, he will Put a guard around your mind, a garrison your mind about, and the devil will not be able to influence you because you have slammed the door in the face of the devil. Amen. Amen.